This podcast is brought to you by Blackbee Ministries International. To find out more, visit blackbee.org. Welcome back to the Richard Blackaby Leadership Podcast. It's my pleasure to be with you, and I'm joined as always by Dr. Richard Blackaby. Good to be with you, Sam. It's a little under the weather today, though, so I apologize Yeah, it sounds like it. You just need to stop getting sick. Have you ever considered that... uh, (laughs) Do you still really want me to do this with the mask on so you don't catch anything today? Yeah, I probably should, actually. We should should sit further apart. Last time time we did this, my whole family ended up sick for like a week, so... (laughs) Now, now you now you mention you're, you know you're all sick. It's, it's completely up front here, complete disclosure here. Full yeah, disclosure. after we start rolling here, so well, you know that's that's how it goes. But uh, well, we're coming into um, the Christmas season here. It's December. Uh, it seems like this year's kind of flown by, yeah. um, and it's uh, it's it's one of my favorite times of the year, aside from my birthday, I guess. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> your birthday month, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but we had a uh, we had a question from a listener uh, a few weeks ago, and we thought we'd uh, just jump on that question today and try and answer that uh, for Anthony. He wrote in uh, just to remind you, Richard, of the question. He says, can you do a podcast on being ambitious as a spiritual leader? Is it wrong, normal, or good? Hmm. Yeah, great question. And I think it's it's certainly worthy of a response. And uh, so we appreciate that when people have some questions that get stirred up. I, it's interesting. I, I tend to, when I'm out running or something, to listen to our podcast, just kind of to re- remind myself of what we said <laughs> and uh, hear how it went. And uh, off. I, well, I'd because say, you have such a, a good voice for yeah, for... I'm just I, I forget how profound I am until <laughs> so I hear it myself. Uh, no, I I uh, but normally when I listen, it usually sparks two or three other ideas. It's like oh wow, you know, not I when I said that that makes me think we should really go, you know dive deeper there. And so uh, so anyway, it's great that uh, people as you're listening, it's it's sparking uh, thoughts as well, and and love to hear that. If we can, we'll try to you know, dive in on some of those, but, but I'm, I am particularly, um, intrigued by the whole idea of ambition and, uh, and there just seems like somewhere in, uh, Christian circles, it's been perceived as a bad thing to be ambitious. It, we, we assume that you've got to be some evil person with sinister motives or selfish motives or prideful motives that, uh, causes you want to, you know, be better than everyone else or whatever. And so it's kind of like we, we, we can't, even if you are ambitious, you don't want to admit it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yet, um, is it wrong uh, to be ambitious, and particularly with this question, to be a spiritual leader? Um, and of course, you know, anything, I, I would say, well, it's wrong if uh, you're ambitious for the wrong things, if you're ambitious to seize power, to, you know, topple the CEO from the company and you take over for him or uh, if, if, it, if it leads you to sin, to do something that's clearly wrong, well then, yeah, that ambition, it, 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 but it's not so much that you're ambitious that is the sin, but if you're ambitious your aim. for something that's sinful, then that's wrong. But, but is it wrong to be ambitious? To me, ambitious means that you are driven. It's really talking about a drive. Uh, and you're driven in a in a powerful, passionate way to accomplish something. And I'll just be honest with you. I've uh, I I feel like that's actually a wholesome thing. It's a good thing to be ambitious for the right things. Um, and what that means is it means you care. It means that you're willing to put in the effort. Uh, that you're focused. You're you're motivated uh, strongly. Uh, and uh, I think in a day such as ours. Uh, this this uh, generation calls for, I think, ambitious spiritual leaders. Mm. Of course, what a spiritual leader is, is someone who moves someone onto God's agenda. And if your role is to take people from where they are and then move them to where God wants them to be, you ought to be ambitious for that. The more people that you move, the better, as far as I, I would believe. And so I want to just look a little bit at that. And, you know, it's interesting, of course, Paul is one of those kind of people in the Bible that uh, you either love him or hate him. Some people just think he he must have been really hard to be around. He's so focused and driven and task-oriented and and just could wear some people out. 
But uh, in, in Philippians 3, Uh, but in Philippians 3, uh, beginning verse 7, it says, But everything that was a gain to me, I've considered to be loss. Of course, he was very ambitious before, but he was ambitious for the wrong things. Uh, because He says, because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them as dung, so that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already reached the goal or I'm already perfect, but I make every effort to take hold of it, because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let all of us who are mature think this way. Uh, And so, you know, Paul, I think that just sort of gets to the heart of his ambition, which was to know God, to Mm -hmm. know him experientially, and basically to fulfill God's purpose for his life, whatever that was. And he said uh, that he became so driven, so ambitious for that, that every other ambition in his life appeared like garbage compared to that. And um, and so there's a, and and I love the phrase, one thing I do, Uh, that, that means that that he prioritized. He said, you know, I used to have various things that I was trying to do, but I, I'm just so driven now by that one ambition that everything else just seems like garbage to me. I, I set it aside and I'm, I'm focused my lifelong uh, passion. And, and so, you know, you see someone that is clearly very, very driven for that. And uh, someone that, that knows what matters and he's putting aside everything that doesn't. And, and of course, arguably, it's pretty difficult to think of um, people that uh, accomplish more in their life than the Apostle Paul did. Uh, his, his life was probably cut short by uh, Nero. Uh, prob- tradition says he was beheaded. But boy, before uh, that happened, uh, it, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone else who impacted the world so much. And so, you know, I, I, throughout my life, I've had people, Sam, that just, I don't know, I've, I've always had people, well-meaning friends, telling me that I was going too hard, um, that I need to slow down, uh, I need to watch my health, and so on. But, uh, you know, I, and I realize there, you can get out of balance, you can, you know, push yourself too hard, and you can sacrifice your health, but... Um, but I think there is, but sometimes I, when I see people telling me that, uh, I look at their life and I see a life that is n- not setting anything on fire. You know, that's, I'm being harsh perhaps, but, um, <laughs> but it's like, well, what are you saving yourself for? Uh, you know, my, my feeling would be uh, we, we have such a brief time upon this planet. I mean, even if you live to be 100, um, you're obviously not going to be productive when you're 100, more than likely. So you, if, you, if you look at the productive years of your life, when you actually have the skills and knowledge and experience and, and platform to make the world a better place, uh, to move people onto God's agenda, you only have a certain number of decades to do that. Mm-hmm. And so um, why would you be coasting through that season of your life? Why would you just be kind of lackadaisical, laissez-faire, whatever will be, will be? Um, why, If you could accomplish good, why would you not want to accomplish the most good possible? Uh, you know, I mean, within reason, you can yeah. go without sleeping and eating and caring for yourself because you want to do one more good thing, but... Uh, well, I, but, think there's, I think there's been a big pushback against this sort of, um, I don't know, I've heard it called hustle culture or, you know... This idea that, you know, if you want to do great things, you just have to just be maniacal about it. And and so I think there is there are some places where it is good to, you know, pull back a little bit and say, OK, well, 
are you are you sprinting or are you running a marathon here mm-hmm. like are you are you living like you're gonna you know die next month and you're just you know firing on all cylinders in, in, to an unhealthy degree yeah uh, versus are, are you you know being efficient and productive with your time in in the best way possible um, and so I think I think some people probably just go to the other extreme and 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 try and just do the, the least amount of work and try and have like the most amount of enjoyment in their life because they think oh well you only live once and so i think there there is sort of this back and forth in our culture right now of of those who have a a huge drive to do whatever it is they're put their mind to and those who are just trying to like figure out a way to do the least amount and 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 just enjoy their life well i i just think there's something so valuable that um you would want to accomplish as much of that as possible it's kind of like you 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 come you stumble upon a a gold mine and it's like well how much of this gold do i want to pull out of here you know i do i just put a few in my pockets or do i you know do i get a backpack do i go get a wheelbarrow like a backhoe um, and uh, <laughs> yeah it's like uh and when you realize God can actually use me to change the eternal destinies of human beings. Mm. Uh, he can help me to save a marriage or help turn a declining church around or to use a business that uh, produces much good for its employees and customers and so on in society at large. Like, you know, why would I not want to do as much of that as I possibly could? And, right. um, and I think, you know, one of the questions is, can you, can you sustain this pace uh, over a lifetime you know if you're if you're not sleeping and you're not eating and you're not caring for yourself uh, you can only do that for a short period of time and then you end up in the hospital and so obviously yeah okay you can't go that hard but can you go at a pace where year in and year out you're still maintaining your health you're still keeping your family blessed uh your walk with god is good uh, but you're accomplishing a lot and i would just contend that there's a lot of leaders out there that that have a higher capacity than what they're experiencing mm. right now, that they could uh, do a better job leading, they could get more results, have more fruit than they're getting right now, but they've been they are content with a lot less. And I see that with pastors all the time. I see pastors uh, they're in the, the same church year after year. It's not growing year after year. The church is the very same size. It's not really doing anything new to reach new people. Uh, it's not developing leaders, but the pastor just, you know, the, the, as a new year rolls around, they just plan on doing all the same things again. And, you know, I look at that and I would say, I think you need more ambition. You need to look at your church and say, Lord, what would it take for this church to, to get off of its plateau and begin growing again? And, uh, you know, sometimes just uh, cranking out the same business uh, leadership year after year, same profit margin, uh, same growth, uh, same product line. Uh, maybe you know, maybe you're doing well in in selling things, but but you know, you don't really have an ambition to look at your your staff and say, but how could we be a greater blessing to them? You know, have, have we seen any of our employees come to Christ this year? Uh, were, did any of our employees' marriages come to an end this year because the stress and here they are working for me five days a week and working around me didn't keep their marriage together, didn't keep, maybe there, maybe there was a suicide among your staff. And does that, do you ever look at that and say, I, I just want to ramp up my leadership to another level where my staff are being more blessed, uh, they're more healthy, uh, they're growing uh, to be more like Christ. Um, and just to say, what would it look like to maybe to ratchet up the ambition a little bit? Now, for some of us, we need to make sure we have the ambition for the right things. Right. If you're just trying to stockpile just a bit more money into your savings accounts than last year. That's not necessarily a bad thing to do, but that's not necessarily what you want to just be driving all your ambition. Um, you want to be looking for the good that God can do. And, you know, as we've said a number of times, I work with a lot of business leaders and, uh, and I, and we often challenge them to say, why has God given you this influence? And these employees that you have some uh, great influence over and you, you affect their families and what, what do you aspire to do? Uh, do you just simply want to crank out a product at the end of the assembly line? 
or do you want uh, to exert an enormous influence on these families? And maybe you help uh, develop a scholarship fund so that your employees can send their kids to college, and uh, or you can just do various things uh, to help them further their education and better themselves. And you, maybe you have ways of giving uh, year-end bonuses that just blesses your staff and you share some of the profits with them. But what what is your ambition? What drives you? And um, and I, I think, uh, you know, if, if you're not ambitious, I don't know that you can ever win an Olympic medal. You know, you're to be yeah. an athlete, uh, to, to uh, compete in various realms of life without ambition. You just don't get up each day and go out and train and exercise and work hard uh, and, and pay the price. I think it's ambition that says, no, there's there's a reward uh, that's that makes it worth all the pain and suffering that you have to go through sometimes to get to the reward. And, uh, and I think sometimes I just want to, for some leaders, I just think that they've lost sight of the potential gain. If you yeah. just, and you know, for some, it's like, well, I've always been bad at leading meetings, but I guess it's just another year of bad meetings. Or, I, you know, not much happens when I preach as a pastor, but uh, that's just the way I've always done it. So, People just kind of know that's what they're going to get from me instead of saying, you know, no, I have an ambition to be a better preacher, a better communicator, a better leader, a uh, better problem solver, a uh, better meeting leader than I've ever been before. And and so I'm just determined that I'm going to move myself from where I am right now to where I think God wants me to be. And, w- and every time you do that, uh, people are blessed because you did. Yeah. Well, let's take a quick break here and we'll wrap up when we come back. God's power and love have no limits, so why do Christians put limits on their relationship with Him? We could be pursuing greater knowledge, experiencing deeper intimacy, and abiding in freer joy. And yet, we routinely settle for mediocrity in our spiritual lives. But if you're ready to explode your self-imposed limits, the Unlimiting God class will show you that you need not settle for less than what God intends for you. God can do extraordinary things through ordinary people, but only when we allow Him to enlarge our spiritual capacity and overcome our self-imposed limits. Registration is now open for Unlimiting God, based on the book Unlimiting God by Richard Blackaby. This six-week study can be found at blackabeyinstitute.com. Learn with others from around the world in this online class. Well, Richard, I think you're right that uh, a lot of a lot of uh, this, the ideas around ambition have kind of been a bit skewed, maybe uh, um, just sort of seen in a negative light, especially in Christian circles and when it comes to spiritual leadership. Do you think uh, uh, for those who maybe don't, you know, have a negative connotation with the idea of ambition? Um, do you think a, a word like stewardship would would be a, a, an adequate substitute if, if that helps them think of it's not so much that you're trying to be great, you know, and, and fulfill selfish desires, but you're trying to lead your life and your your organization uh, yeah. as a good steward, knowing steward that it's not a, your. I think that's a that's that word probably covers it. I just think uh, I, I I like something that has a bit more drivenness to it. You know, yeah. stewardship sometimes makes me think of a banker in a three-piece suit just carefully stewarding stuff, mm. whereas ambition, I see it like a mountain climber or some, or an athlete or someone yeah. that is driven uh, to go to greater lengths than they've gone to before. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I, I like that sense of, it's, you know, and it's, it's kind of like, um, I just think that a healthy ambition is a good thing. So like, yeah. for instance, if you're married and God gave you a wonderful spouse and on your wedding day, you had dreams and visions of having this wonderful person, uh, your lifelong companion. But then you got into the business of work and you both have, you know, you got stress of raising kids and other things. And and you just realize at a certain point, you know what, I am grossly underutilizing this wonderful thing that God gave me as a marriage spouse. We There's so much more that our marriage could be, but we've just kind of settled. And, uh, you know, it's not our marriage is bad, but I just realized it could be so much more. Uh, but I've got to, if I, if, I, if I sort of am willing to just kind of sink into the lethargy of saying it's good enough, or I guess that's all it's going to be, um, then I think a really good, healthy dose of ambition is good to say, no, I'm yeah. very ambitious 
um, to get the very most out of this marriage, make it all that it could be, or when you become a child of God and you have all the resources of heaven available to you, and yet you're living in spiritual defeat uh, and in bondage to fear, to regret, or to your past, or to sinful habits, and and you've just kind of resigned yourself to say, I'm never going to be a spiritual saint, apparently. Uh, and I would say, well, you need a healthy dose of ambition to say, no, I, I know there's more that I could be as a child of God. And I'm just not I'm just not willing to settle for less than all that God has for me. You know, I think a lot of it, uh, Sam, comes down to knowing your purpose. If, yeah. if you know that your life has a purpose, then how can you go to sleep at night knowing you haven't yet fulfilled it? You know, if you don't have a sense of purpose, if your life is just basically spent just day by day, just have a good day, you know, have a nice day. Um, well, then whatever you do is fine. You know, uh, yeah. whatever you do in the day is, is good. But if you realize, no, my purpose is to make the world a better place. My, my purpose is to use my company to be a blessing to, uh, to others. Uh, my role as a pastor is to move this church from where it is to where God wants it to be. Uh, my my purpose in life is to be used by God to make people's lives better, more like Christ, to, to find salvation, uh, to have their eternal destiny change. Well, I'll tell you what, when you start to realize the significant, eternal, God-given purpose that he has for you, then how could you just kind of sort of casually go through your day? Yeah. How, how could you ever say, well, that was good enough, even though I didn't really do all that much? I, you know, I, God gave me all these gifts. I never really even got into the game. I never really applied them. Uh, you know, I, I'm in this company, and there's all kinds of problems I could probably uh, fix or make better, but, you know, they didn't ask me to, or that's not my job, or I don't want to have to put in overtime and not get to go home on time, and so I'm just good with uh, just letting it go. Uh, and there, there are just those people that have the attitude of just why, you know, why bother? I could do something, but why bother? Why, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, get, I get paid the same whether I uh, do more or do less. So, you know, why would I put myself in any more? And, and I've had, you know, I remember a number of jobs I had where my attitude always was just exceed expectations, whether I get paid for it or not. I just, I'd rather go the extra mile and feel like I did my best. Um, and I can, and whether I ever get acknowledged for it or not, um, that doesn't, that's not what my ambition is for. My ambition is not for praise and recognition. It's mm. ambition uh, to be the best version of me that I can be. And, you know, of course there's always some dangers. If you, you, the dangers of being ambitious is, is it, it can lead to pride. It can lead you to start comparing yourself with others and saying, look how much better I am than that person. Look how much more I did than that person. Um, and it can make you start to think it's about you instead of about God and God's purpose for your life. Uh, and sometimes if we're ambitious, of course, it can lead us also to start using people to feed our ambition. To, we begin to look at people as a means, not as an end. And uh, and so there, there, that's why ambition oftentimes gets a bad rap, because there, it has led people to do some bad things. And so we just assume, okay, ambition is bad. Well, no, it just, it's like, you know, a vehicle that has the capacity to, to go fast. That's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're on the German Autobahn or you're on the highway and you're on the freeway and you're supposed to go fast, try to cover a lot of ground. But, uh, but if you're driving too fast over the speed limit, then it becomes a bad thing. And, I think ambition can kind of be like that too. Ambition channeled in the right direction helps you accomplish a lot, cover a lot of ground. Yeah, well, it's like nuclear energy, you know, or something. It's, yeah. You know, nuclear energy is one of the greatest inventions, I feel like, of the 20th century. And yet it can be a devastating, if, if, if applied wrongly. Yeah. You know, it can be devastating. Yeah, and I, I just think that perhaps as we're beginning to wind down this year and looking at the next year, uh, you know, some of the most successful leaders that I've ever known or studied about have not necessarily had uh, greater intelligence, greater skills than other people. They just had a greater ambition. They just yeah. were determined 
that they were going to achieve something, accomplish something. You look at like an Abraham Lincoln or someone that lost a number of elections, went bankrupt, experienced all kinds of failure, easily could have just kind of resigned himself to just just sort of get by, just this is good enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there's just a certain ambition uh, to accomplish something for good that drives certain people uh, to just not give up, not quit, uh, to keep trying to find a way. And oftentimes uh, you look at that and you realize, well, the reason that they accomplished so much was not that they had more time, more ability. They were just driven uh, to find what their maximum capacity was. And and so I guess a question I would just have for our listeners is, are you fulfilling the capacity you have? You, you know, if you don't have the capacity to be a 10 out of 10 leader, then that's fine if you're leading yeah. at a seven level. But if you've got a lot more capacity to accomplish a lot more good, um, and you're, and, but you're content to just kind of leave all that on the table, uh, not to do that. Well, then maybe you need a little injection of ambition to say, you know what, I could do more. Um, I, I could become more. I could uh, have more victory in my life. Uh, I could be more helpful. I could solve more problems. Um, I could do a lot more good for others. And and I've got plenty of capacity for it. I just have been con- I've just been content not to do that. And and uh, that really, I think, comes ultimately from a moving of God in your life, where God just says, "I wired you for a lot. I made you a Ferrari, yeah. and you're driving, and you're going, and you're 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 moving along like a moped. You know, it's uh, you've got a way more capacity than that. It's about time that you had an ambition uh, to fulfill your calling, your purpose, your capacity, whatever that is. Don't go beyond your capacity or your calling. Uh, don't envy some. Don't try to fulfill someone else's." Uh, calling or capacity but take a good look at you know stand before your creator let him show you what he designed you to do and then never be satisfied unless you're living your life to the fullest of what god designed you to experience well good i appreciate you taking us through this and i think it can be very helpful for a lot of us uh, as we think about leadership and ambition and what that looks like uh, especially in the life of a spiritual leader so thank you richard Thanks for listening to the podcast. If this is something you enjoyed, it really makes a difference if you leave a review and a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. We always love hearing from our listeners. So email us at podcast at blackv.org.